Hi everyone, Ryan here. This video will be a full tutorial on how to use Seller Sprite for complete beginners. And essentially, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I use Seller Sprite for product research. So if you're new to Amazon FBA and you're worried that this might be too complicated, then no worries, we're going to break down everything and make the process as simple as possible. So without much further ado, let's get right into the video. And before we talk about the product research tutorial itself, I have to mention that Seller Sprite does come with a monthly free plan available. However, it is a little bit restricted. So as you can see from the feature comparison, the free plan does offer access to a handful of tools. However, you are limited to just the first five records for key features like keyword mining, keyword research, and reverse ASIN lookups. This means you're only scratching the surface in terms of the data and insights that you can access. You also don't get any storefront or product tracking capabilities with the free plan, which are essential for keeping tabs on your competitors and monitoring your own product's performance over time. In contrast, even the entry-level basic plan removes most of these limitations, giving you unlimited access to core features like the keyword research and the reverse ASIN lookups. And while the monthly pricing might seem a little bit steep at first glance, you can save up to 16.67% by opting for an annual billing instead. And when you consider the potential impact that these tools can have on your product research, it quickly becomes a worthwhile investment. And to make the deal even better, our viewers can use our coupon code TM35, and then you can get 45% off your Seller Sprite monthly plan or 35% off for a year making it an incredibly low risk way to test out the full capabilities of the software. So if you're serious about taking your Amazon FBA business to the next level, I highly recommend checking out Seller Sprite's plans and taking advantage of the discounts. Moving on, let's talk about the product research process. We're going to be using Seller Sprite's product research module. You can access it by going over to the tools menu and looking for product research under the opportunity finders section. This is where we can input the criteria for our product research. By using these filters, you're not just looking at every potential category or product in Amazon's millions of products catalog. Instead, you are locking in to the most promising opportunities and simplifying the process of finding winners. First, let's go ahead and select some categories to focus on. And there isn't a necessarily right or wrong category on Amazon, but some of them are tougher to sell in than others. For example, I would personally avoid the groceries and the gourmet food category because of all the rabbit holes that you would have to jump in to sell food products. So to keep things simple, I'm going to look for the home and kitchen category, which is probably the most popular category for Amazon FBA. Lawn and garden are another extremely popular ones. After that, let's dive into the other important filters. So under units sold per month, for example, if you want to make at least $1,000 of profit each month, then you would be aiming for at least $5 profit per sale. And then simple math tells us that we need to sell a minimum of 200 units monthly. So then I would go and set the minimum to 200. You also want to avoid the super high volume products that require a huge upfront investment in order to keep the product in stock. So you can go ahead and set the maximum to 800 units per month. After all, if a product sells 5,000 units monthly at a cost of just $5 per unit from your supplier, then that's $25,000 in inventory that you need to bankroll each month. By capping in at 800 units, we keep the financial requirements more manageable, especially when just starting out, and these are all hypothetical numbers. Moving on to the product size under the FBA size filter, I recommend selecting small standard up to medium oversize. For your first product, it's best to exclude large standard to avoid higher FBA fees. We can also exclude small and light, which has lower fees, but also typically requires a price point under $10. As for the price range, I like to set the minimum at $19. Because if you put it at $20, it will actually exclude products priced at $19.99. So $19 is a safer bet. I also wouldn't go much lower than $17 because you don't want to get caught in a race to the bottom on price. It's good to have some cushion for things like advertising costs. And on the high end, you can set it to $30. Keep in mind that there is usually a correlation between a product's selling price and how much it costs to source from your supplier. So if you are working with a limited budget, you probably don't want to look at products that cost $50, $60 or more to purchase. And lastly, let's talk about the product weight and how it impacts the FBA fees. In general, fees are based on the product's dimensions and weight. Amazon's fee structure has gotten more complex over the years with different tiers like small standard, large standard, and so on. We have already addressed the size tiers with the previous filter, but you can further optimize it by setting a weight limit. Everything over three pounds gets lumped into the highest fee tier. So let's set the maximum weight to three pounds. Now that all of the filters are set up, let's hit the search now button and see what product ideas Solar Sprite finds for us. In just a few seconds, it returns a ton of different product ideas. And if you scroll to the bottom, you will see options to load more results or change how many display per page. 
Personally, I like 50 results at a time, but you can choose whatever you want. And one of my favorite features is the grid view option because it makes it super easy to quickly scroll through the product ideas. I noticed a lot of the other competitors don't have this feature and it's a huge time saver. So scrolling through, I would recommend looking for lightweight or compact products as the dimensional weight is probably low, which means lower FBA fees. It is a solar digital pool thermometer. I can also see it having very practical applications considering that summer is coming. So you could easily target both organic rankings and the PPC ads. So now that we have spotted a promising product, let's switch back to the normal list view to dive into the data. So right off the bat, we can see that this product costs $19.98. And that's what I was talking about earlier. If we set the price minimum range to be at $20, then this one would have been filtered out. Also, we can see that there is over 700 units sold with this product, generating over $13,000 just in the past month alone. As for the historical trends chart, it shows a little bit of inconsistency. And this would make sense as we have just got out of winter. And I doubt anybody would be using their outside pool during this time. So I would expect that the sales would be increasing month over month with a consistent upward growth going into summer. All in all, these tools give me indicators that show the product's potential. And checking the Keeper data integration, we can analyze the long-term trends in sales rank, review count, and rating. I also recommend taking advantage of repricing strategies as dropping your price by just 5% can trigger a nice highlighted price slash on your listing. And this really stands out to people shopping. It can even earn you special tags in the search results. So I always reprice frequently on my own listings for this reason. Moving on, let's talk about some of the seller's price advanced features that we can utilize here. With a reverse ASIN lookup, you can see that a lot of this listing's clicks comes from searches related to pool thermometer and the bath thermometer. For the first keyword that earned us the most traffic, you could see that most of it came from organic sources, whereas the bath thermometer, most of the traffic came from ads. And this tells you exactly where to focus your PPC efforts for maximum return on ad spend. The keyword explorer gives us even more in-depth insights to plan out our SEO and PPC strategies. But we can take it a step further with the keyword explorer, which gives you even more data on the search volume, competition levels, and the recommended PPC bids for all of the relevant keywords. This is the kind of information that separates the amateurs from the pros on Amazon. And if you really want to get surgical with your strategies, then you can use Seller Sprite's PPC as insight to spy on your competitors' ad campaigns and see exactly which keywords they are targeting, how much they are bidding, and how well each keyword is performing for them. It's like getting an inside look at their playbook. Another thing I always like to do is to scope out the competition to see if there are opportunities to differentiate your product or provide a better customer experience. So we can instantly pull up a list of competing products and sort them by their star ratings. And let's say that the best seller in this niche only has a four star rating. That tells me that there is a lot of room for improvement. So then I would dig deeper into the reviews and identify any common pain points that I could address with my own product. Of course, we always need to make sure that the numbers are adding up. And that's where we can use Seller Sprite's built-in profitability calculator. It factors in all of the Amazon fees and lets us punch in our own costs to get an accurate profit projection. So if let's say our supplier quotes us $4 per unit and we can estimate another $4 per unit in shipping costs from China to Amazon's warehouses. So plugging that in along with the current selling price of $19.98, the calculator shows a net profit of $3.41 with a profit margin of 17.07%. And this leaves you with a decent cushion for PPC and other expenses. And that's actually pretty solid for a brand new product launch. And you have to keep in mind that these are just some rough figures. As you start to gain traction and build up your reviews and sales velocity, you'll be able to negotiate better rates with your supplier and likely get your shipping costs down. And you do that by placing larger bulk orders or optimizing your packaging. Over time, it's not uncommon to see your profit margin climb up to 25%, 30%, or even higher on a successful product. So for example, based on everything I have uncovered in this research, the strong demand, the untapped keyword opportunities, the relatively weak competition, and other things, I could potentially add this product on my short list of products to validate. So hopefully that this deep dive has given you a much clearer picture of how to leverage Seller Sprite's powerful tools and data to identify winning products. As you can see, finding a great product is just the first step. From there, you would need to dig into the keywords, analyze the competition, and really understand your target market and what makes them tick. The more strategic and data-driven we can be in your approach, the higher your chances of success.
So if you're interested in learning even more, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be making more videos on Seller Sprite and other competitive tools like Helium 10. Let us know if you have any other questions in the comment section down below and see you guys in the next video.